Hey, so I wasn't initially expecting this box today, nor did I even want it today. However, it arriving a day early gives me a great opportunity to probably address one of your biggest concerns, and that is um, ordering frozen meat on the internet. So how long can it sit outside and still be good? So I'm actually gonna stick this box in the garage and well, we're gonna get to it tomorrow. Okay, even though my garage is way too messy to be on video, we're gonna leave this box here. We're gonna let it hang out for a day and then we're gonna check it out tomorrow and see what it's like. So look forward to opening up. Hey, welcome to Fitness and Beer. I'm Larry Powell. As you may be aware of by now, you can pretty much order anything online and even your weekly grocery shopping trip can be replaced with a few internet clicks. Well, it's probably more than a few clicks and more like a few dozen clicks because by the time you get all of it, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, in an effort to eat better, control the quality of my food, and since I love to grill, I became curious about what it would be like to use an internet meat subscription. And while being able to specifically select humanely raised, grass-fed, free-ranged, and wild-caught options by simply clicking on the internet, the concept still felt a little foreign to me because, well, I was used to just going to my local grocery store and picking out the best available. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what my experience was like in the hopes of giving you some idea of what to expect. Hopefully answer some of the questions you may have. And we're also going to do a few taste comparisons. Now there are several of these meat subscription box services to choose from. There's butcher box, which is probably the most famous Omaha steaks, snake river farms and carnivore club, just to name a few, but I chose crowd cow both because it was recommended by a friend and after doing a little bit of research, I just liked their pricing and purchasing option. I felt that the CrowdCal site was pretty user friendly. It was easy to find what I was looking for and I was able to put together a package that suited my family needs pretty quickly without a ridiculous amount of clicking around. On to the next part and something that you're probably wondering about and that is delivery. I placed my order on a Monday so that I could make this video. I intentionally scheduled the delivery for Saturday. I received a notification that my package was shipped and expected to arrive by Friday, which was a day early. Now, in many instances, an early delivery is a good thing, but in this case, it wasn't gonna work for me since I have a day job and I couldn't do the unboxing until Saturday. So quickly I reached out to Crowd Cow and I said, hey, I'm not gonna be at home to receive my package on the day that it is to be delivered. To which they responded that the package was packed in dry ice and should last one to two days past the delivery date. I thought to myself, hey, what a great opportunity to test it out. This box has been sitting in my garage for nearly 24 hours. Let's open it up, see how it held up and check out what I ordered. Okay. Let's get in here. So this is a good thing to know because if you're going to order a package from CrowdCow and you think, you know, I'm going to have a late day at work or in case the delivery is delayed, it really increases the possibility that your package is going to be okay. So I'm excited. And let's get in here and see what we got. Ah, there's lots of ice and coldness still around. So. However, that dry, dry ice was packed, it seems like it's done its job. Okay, and everything is still well frozen. So I just wanna point that out. Everything is well frozen. And I gotta think, if this package was to sit around for another 24 hours, like, I mean, yeah, that thing is as hard as a rock. So. Here's everything that I ordered, and this hit me for right around $100, and let's go over what we have here. What I have right here is a three pound tri-tip, uh, something that can be fast cooked or slow cooked, depending on how you wanna do it. I have, I think it's 16 ounces of flank steak, and then I have two pounds of pasture-raised, boneless, skinless chicken breast, and then what I have is three eight ounce tenderloins or fillets, if you will. Okay, so here's everything that I got for right around $100, which I actually think is a pretty fair price in comparison to what you would get in the grocery store. 
And now I'm gonna move this tenderloin because I'm gonna leave this out and that's gonna be part of dinner tonight. And then I'm gonna go to the grocery store and get a couple uh, pieces of tenderloin there. And we're gonna do a little taste comparison. So let's get on to the next step. So I was out the door and on my way to the local grocery store where I picked up both fresh tenderloin and flank steak for a taste comparison. I also took note of the prices and found the prices of grocery store meats comparable to that of their frozen internet counterparts. Upon arriving home, I prepped both the meats and my grill. I made an effort to prepare all of the meats in a similar fashion, and after a little bit of work, it was time for my first taste comparison. Hey, so the moment of truth. I have just a very small piece of each cut. I know which one is which, and I'm gonna taste each one and see how they compare. No discernible difference. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. The next day I prepared the tri-tip, which was also repurposed into wraps the following day. And I used the chicken to make delicious General Tso's chicken from a recipe I found in Men's Health. I'll provide a link to the recipe in the description. And finally, to finish the week, I prepared flank steak for the last taste comparison. Hey, so now for the moment of truth, I'm gonna try each steak and compare. So first of all, I did my best to marinate and season the steaks equally. And on this side, we have the grocery store version of a flank steak. And on this side, we have the crowd cow. So, well, let me dig in and tell you what I think. Sorry about that, bit off more than I could chew. So when it comes to flank steak, there is a definite difference. This is more flavorful, more tender, not sure why. Hey, so it's been a week since I've received my order. I had a chance to test it out and what do I think? Is an online meat subscription service something that's worth it? Well, yeah. I especially like the fact that I can select the style of raising and sourcing of my meats. You can even look up the various farms that the specific meats came from online. This just gives me the impression that I'm making better, healthier choices. And as far as pricing is concerned, I find that the price is very much in line with what you would find in the grocery store, all the way up to very specialized and super expensive cuts of meat. So if you're a meat connoisseur and you can get past the frozen thing, well, then this is it. I personally spent about $110 and I had enough food to feed an entire family for the bulk of a week. And this includes feeding three adults. And as far as taste is concerned, I felt that the crowd cow cuts held up in every way to their fresh grocery store counterparts. And in the case of the flank steak, I felt that the crowd cow cuts were better, both in texture and in flavor. However, when I did the filet, uh, I feel like there was a little bit of user error involved. I didn't necessarily cook either filet to the temperature that I would have liked, which may have tainted the taste comparison a little bit. However, still very comparable. Now, if you decide to look into one of these subscription services, they're gonna try to lock you into a monthly box. For me, this isn't a problem because I actually have a tendency to order more often. And each time that I order, I just customize my box specific to what I'm looking for. So essentially what it comes down to is I just order what I want each time. I do feel that uh, having an online meat subscription service is at the very least could be a nice supplemental option. And if you so chose, it could be your primary way of purchasing meat. I'm probably not gonna do that. I still like an occasional trip to the grocery store for, for a different reason. However, in the end, what do I think? Am I gonna keep my subscription? Well, for now, the answer is yes. I enjoy having it. I hope this was helpful. Thanks a bunch for watching. Oh, and really quick, if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Oh, I've never asked that before, but uh, please do. Again, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, fitness and beer.